Hello and welcome back to another Geo Explaining video. And today we will continue on Chapter 1 Landscapes. We will look into another type of exogenic force erosion. Erosion is the continued wearing down of rocks and land surfaces by one of the transporting agents, such as wind, water, and ice. Let's take a closer look at these agents and how they cause this erosion, the wearing down of the landscape. First, let's talk about wind erosion. Have you ever laid down on the beach on a nice sunny day and then all of a sudden the wind starts to pick up? The sand whooshes over your body and your face and it does kind of hurt. This is how wind can cause erosion. You see, the wind is transporting other sediments, in this case the sand from the beach and the force that it smashes all those tiny sediments into your body causes your body to slowly get smaller. Now, of course, in this one minute or couple minutes that you lay on the beach and all this sand whooshes over your face and your body, you don't really get smaller. But if there is a rock which is laying down there for over hundreds of years, you can imagine how strong the wind erosion can be. Just look at this. this is caused by wind erosion, making it smaller, breaking down the land. And this is how wind can cause erosion, wind erosion. Second, there is ice erosion, or in better terms, glacial erosion. On top of the mountains, snow has accumulated over the years and under the pressure of its own weight, it forms ice, a glacier. These glaciers are practically frozen rivers because very slowly they move down. You can kind of imagine how heavy all this ice must be. So the weight of the glacier pushes into the ground. The heavy glacier with many sediments in it wears down the surface below and around the glaciers and brings with it a lot of rocks and other sediments. Only when the glacier melts which can take a very long time depending on the global temperature, it becomes visible how the glacier has worn down the landscape. As when the glacier melts, what is left behind is a large valley. And a glacial valley is easily noticeable because the glaciers are very wide and have kind of this U-shape. So the valley itself also has this U-shaped form. We call these types of valleys U-shaped valleys. And this is how glacial erosion causes the land to wear down. And in the end, you are left with a U-shaped valley. Next, there is water erosion. But we need to divide water erosion into two categories. There is the river erosion and there is the ocean erosion. With ocean erosion, the waves that crash into the cliffs of the beaches are also filled with smaller sediments such as sand and clay and maybe tiny, tiny pebbles. So not only does the power of the wave that smashes into the rock wear down the landscape, but also all these tiny bits of sediment constantly push and push into the landscape. Over time, this will have an eroding effect of the beach and the landscape, the cliff, the beach will wear down. This is how the ocean can cause erosion. On the other hand, with river erosion, the sediments such as pebbles and rocks and sand and clay have an eroding effect on the landscape around or below the river. But the erosion caused by the river is different depending on where you are in the river. So let's see how erosion works in the three different parts of the river. You have the upper course, which lay high in the mountains. You have the middle course, which lay between the mountains and the flatlands at the end. And there is the lower course, which lay in the flat areas next to the ocean. These areas are also known as plains because they're very plain. The river courses are kind of similar to a slide in the upper courses in the beginning, the river goes really steep and fast. In the middle courses, it kind of cools down. And then in the lower courses, you're almost flat and end up in the ocean. 
So let's see how erosion works in the three different courses. First, the upper course. Here, the river starts somewhere in the top of the mountains due to melting snow or rainfall, or there is a spring from underground water. Due to gravity, water will always try to flow down to the lowest point, which usually ends in the ocean. But in the mountains, there's not much space to go around because there's lots of relief. So the river finds the best way possible to go down. And because of the high speeds in the upper course, the river is powerful enough to still bring the bigger sediments with it, such as rocks and pieces of cobbles. These sediments scrape over the bottom of the river bed, carving out and wearing down the landscape below the river. And if you do this over hundreds and hundreds of years, the river will kind of cut itself in into the mountain. And this way you can get a valley, but not as wide as a glacial valley, because glaciers were very wide, but rivers are usually very thin in the upper course. So it is a very pointy valley, making it a V-shaped valley. So in the upper course, erosion happens usually vertically into the mountains, trying to bring down the mountain and finding the fastest way down to the ocean. Then we enter into the middle course. The speed and thus the power of the river has gone down a little bit. Because of this, the river is not strong enough to bring the bigger sediments, such as the cobbles and the rocks that we were talking about in the upper course. So they have sedimented down. This is why you usually find bigger rocks alongside the river when you are in the mountains. In the middle course, the landscape consists mostly of hills. So there is still some relief, but it's not as much as in the upper course. Here, the river will still cause vertical erosion, still trying to go down towards sea level. But because there is more space due to a lower relief, the river has more space to go left and right, causing horizontal erosion. And in the middle course, you will mostly find medium-sized sediments, such as pebbles, which have been brought down or broken down from the upper course. But in the middle course, the power of the river goes down and so the pebbles will also fall down. And finally, we have arrived into the lower course. The speed and thus the power of the river is at its lowest here. And because the power of the river, the strength of the river to carry sediments is so low, it will mostly have sand and clay falling down. And as the lower course mostly consists of flat plains, which are almost as high as the sea level, there is almost no vertical erosion anymore because we are already on one of the lowest points. And because it is so flat, the river has a lot of space to go horizontally. This is why you can find lots of bending in the rivers in the lower course and also why you can find sand and clay sediments into the lower course. And this is how river erosion works in the upper, middle and lower course of the river. So. To summarize everything that we've learned today, you now know what erosion is, in which four ways erosion can happen, by wind, glaciers, the ocean or the rivers, how each of these types of erosion work, how river erosion is different depending on where you are in the river, which course of the river you are, and why you can find mostly sand at the ends of the river near the beaches or the dunes. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in class or in the next video. Goodbye.